Hey, this is Dustin Haas, and you're listening to Line for Line. There you go. Look, the biggest podcast where you can learn them lessons. Line for Line where you can learn from different sections. Made it out the mud, come tell your story, blessings. Never know who listening, never know who's stressing. Devon gave you a voice, come speak your honest truth. Line for Line, go ball for ball, it's up to you. Wanna talk sports, gov, and politics? Wanna talk about where you from and your accomplishments? The line for line is really where you need to be A platform that's really made for folks like you and me You can find it all no matter what you seek Whether you calling or you listening, tune in every week Alright, just like that, we are back in another episode of Line for Line I have a very gracious coach in the building today Giving me a few minutes of his time just to tell us his story and his coaching strategies I have Mr. Dustin in the building Dustin, how are you, sir? I'm doing well, doing well, glad to be here Thanks for having me yeah. on Yes, sir, how are you this Saturday? Doing well. It's been a busy Saturday. Uh, we had a recruiting visit this morning, so had about 28 kids on campus. And uh-huh. as soon as that got done, got in a car, and it's a lot, a lot longer from Carthage than I thought it'd be to yeah. get down here, but uh, <laughs> but made it and excited to be here. What did you think of that snow that we got this morning? Uh, I mean, it's December, so what else can you expect? I would like it to be summer a little bit longer, mm-hmm. uh, but shoot, I think this week's supposed to be in the 60s again, so yes, sir. we'll get teased a little bit. <laughs> now, before we get ready to start, I have a silly question. Are you from Alabama? I am not. No. No. Okay. You just have the accent. I was trying to put, you trying know, to put my finger on I, I get that a lot. I, I'm, I'm from Wisconsin originally. No way. Uh, I, I am. <laughs> and my wife went to school down in Alabama, South Alabama. And, uh, you know, I went to school in Indiana, which is southern, or at Indiana, which is southern Indiana, and then lived in Louisville, Kentucky for a while. Oh, baby. Uh, that's and, I, and I guess, yeah, just being down there and being around her enough, I guess I kind of picked it up a little bit. Gotcha. Gotcha. So as we get ready to start, just go ahead and give the fans just a little bit about you and who you are, sir. Yeah, so um, Dustin Haas uh, from Wisconsin originally, son of a high school football coach, so I moved around a little bit, uh, ended up graduating from O'Connell High School, which is just north of Green Bay uh, in Wisconsin, yeah, way up there, almost to the UP, Mm -hmm. Um, (laughs) and then uh, went to school down at Indiana University. Uh, played football there for uh, Terry Hebner and Bill Lynch. Okay. Uh, and then when I got done playing, Bill hired me as a GA, so I was a grad assistant there for three years. Uh, have been uh, in Kentucky, Ohio, uh, and then came uh, back to Wisconsin about nine years ago. Yes, sir. Um, and uh, that's kind of where I'm at. And just for those listeners at home, who is it that you currently coach for now? Uh, I'm the head football coach at uh, Carthage College here in Kenosha, Wisconsin. Gotcha. What, excuse me. What was that like for you on getting that job for you? Uh, it was a little bit of a whirlwind. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, we didn't know uh, the guy that I worked for kind of called us up. Uh, we were down in Florida recruiting, uh, called everybody up on a Sunday and said, hey, come on back home. I just took another job. And then uh, I was promoted on a Tuesday, on that Tuesday. So I didn't have a ton of time to think about it. Uh-huh. Uh, but it's it's been good. It's been fun. Uh, we've enjoyed it. Yes, had a lot of fun. So Yes, sir. Now, I noticed you said you played football as well, too. Just tell us a little bit about the position you played and what it was like going from a player to a coach. I was a quarterback, uh, which I think helps a lot just because, uh, you know, the amount you have to learn and know. Um, And then it was kind of something that I wasn't ready to give up football yet. Uh, I like the competitive aspect of it, the the team aspect of it, camaraderie part of it, Mm -hmm. and wanted to stay in it. And so, you know, when I was kind of nearing the end of my playing career, talking to the the guys I played for, uh, they kind of laid out the steps that I'd need to take. And I was lucky enough that Bill hired me at Indiana, and that kind of kicked it off. Yes, sir. Now, as a former player, a quarterback, obviously, you and the coach go hand in hand. You guys are a tandem, if you will. What are some things that you were taught as a quarterback that you use this day, to this day in your coaching strategies? Probably one of the biggest thing was, you know, just the general base of knowledge and then communication, right? It's, it's a big thing. It doesn't matter what I know. It matters what they know, mm-hmm. uh, you know, and just having the whole knowledge of what everybody on the offense is doing and then being able to communicate it to everybody was was probably the biggest lesson that I take away. Yes, sir. Now, I said your dad was a coach as well too, correct? He was, yeah, for probably 25 years. He was a head high school coach in uh, in Wisconsin and Indiana. So he was your coach as you were coming up as well too? He was, yeah. We could uh, we could spend all day telling some of those stories. But, yeah, yeah he, was, uh, he was my high school head coach. Just help us, for those listeners at home who have their – their parents as coaches well too just help us a little bit understand what that was like having your dad 
as your coach as well, too. Yeah, I mean, he kind of told me going into it. He said, "Hey, I'm going to be harder on you than anybody else, uh, <laughs> you know, because you're my son, and they have to know that you earned the job based on your abilities and not just the fact that you're my son." So I kind of knew it going in, but uh, you know, he was extremely hard on me, uh, you know. But he was hard on everybody. He was a good coach, um, you know, and. The frustrating thing for me, I, I was a quarterback, and I want to throw the ball. He ran the triple option, and he wasn't going to change for me at all. Yeah. Uh, so uh, we went, I played, we ran the triple option. We had a ton of success. Um, and then my senior year, the last game of the year, I think we are in level three or level four of the playoffs. We fell behind, and uh-huh. we had to throw the ball. And I set a couple records throwing the ball, no and way. we ended up losing. And it was we scored a bunch of points at the end, kind of furious rally, threw for a bunch of yards, a bunch of touchdowns. And, um, you know, obviously last game of your high school career is, is when it's over, it's a horrible feeling, right? You're mm-hmm. done, you know, with those guys, can't play anymore. And uh, my dad being my dad, he wasted no time. I woke up the next morning, and he said, you know what, we probably should have thrown the ball a lot more yeah. while you were in high school. <laughs> <laughs> now, at what point was it that you realized coaching was your thing? I would say probably my junior year of college. Um, you know, it was it was one of those things where I was like, I, I'm not ready to give it up. Uh, mm-hmm. You know, I knew I wasn't good enough to keep playing, playing. Oh, no. uh, but I wanted to stay in the game, and and that was the best way to do it. Yes, sir. What What do you think would be like the main advice that you would give to that college player? who thinks that they doesn't have a future in football that maybe wants to go into coaching? Uh, the biggest thing is be willing to work long hours for little to no money early <laughs> on. Uh, you know, getting into the business is hard um, mm-hmm. just because a lot of those positions, you don't make a lot of money. Uh, you do a lot of a lot of work, a lot of things. Uh, shoot, right now I got a grad assistant hanging out with my kids, you yeah. know, right? Yeah. Like that's not part of the job description. That's mm-hmm. not something that you'd expect. Um, but just be kind of willing to, to do that kind of stuff and, and eventually you break through and, and it's a very rewarding career. Yes, sir. Now let's go ahead and transition back into Carthage. What was it like upon arriving at at the campus and everything like that for you? I mean, it's obviously a beautiful school, uh, you know, right on Lake Michigan. Mm-hmm. Uh, it was phenomenal. I'm actually from Wisconsin. I had no idea it was even there. Really? Right? Did, had no idea. You know, I was all western or northern part of the state and mm-hmm. and uh, didn't even really realize it. And, and when I got here on my interview, it was just blown away by uh, the campus. And then you learn more about it and realize it's such a phenomenal education, uh, some great athletics and emphasis put on athletics, which is awesome. Um, and that's why we've stayed here so long is, is it's such a great place. It's a great community. Uh, my family and I have really loved it. Yeah. Now going into it, into taking the job, what was one thing that you had in your mind that you were going to bring to the campus with your presence? Well, I mean, it's a little bit tougher because I came as a DBs guy, right? Mm-hmm. So when I came, it was um, a little more of, hey, this was this head coach's vision, and, and I bought into that and uh, you know knew I could coach up that position pretty well, and I thought we had the potential to win a lot of games. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, So I believed in, uh, in Coach Yeager and what he had, uh, had going on, and, and we've had a bunch of success because of that. Yes, sir. Now, what is it like going through the motions of getting to know the guys individually and as a team as well? Yeah, it's a long process. Yeah. Uh, you know, it starts in the recruiting process. As you recruit guys, you get to know them, what they're about a little bit, and then uh, obviously gets accelerated in fall camp once they get on campus. Um, but it's like anything else, right? You just ask pointed questions and get to know each other and feel each other out, and as they go on uh, – and get older and older, you get closer and closer. Yes, sir. For those listeners who also don't know, what type of success have you been seeing since you've been implemented into the program? Yeah, we've had a bunch of success, um, particularly in the CSIW conference. Um, you know, we've uh, we've won some games, uh, mm-hmm. had some good success, but really the – at the end of the day, the thing that I'm most proud of is is 100% of the kids that have come in and stayed four years that I've been there have graduated. Mm-hmm. They've got degrees. Um, you know, they're they're doing some pretty cool things. Uh, you know, we had uh, a former player of ours, Lafayette McGarry, on campus today. He brought two kids that go to the high school that he went to mm-hmm. up on a visit today. Nice. Uh, you know, he graduated in 2018, but but to see him back again, uh, you know, being like, hey, guys, this is a place you need to check out because I had such a great experience here and it's helped me have a ton of success in my work career. You mm-hmm. should go check that place out. Out is really awesome. Yes, sir. Just tell us a little bit more about the feeling of seeing these kids that you help coach into men and the success that they have after they leave your program. What is that like seeing that? That's the best part, right? You see, mm-hmm. you see guys get married and have kids and develop into great husbands and great fathers and great leaders in, commu- in the community. And, and ultimately, that's our goal, right? We want them to leave here better than when they came in and equipped to have a ton of success. And 
that's the best feeling in the world to, you know, have a guy come back after how many years and say, Hey, you had a big impact on my life and I wouldn't be where I am today without, you know, you guys as football coaches. Yes, sir. Now, if there was like one statement that most of your players would say about you, what would it be? Like if there was, let's say they've said, he always stayed on us about making sure we stay on this or X, Y, Z. Oh man, that's tough. I, I, I think probably grades would be the biggest one, right? Mm-hmm. And that's probably the thing we're on them the most, uh, is just making sure they stay on top of that. So I think if you pulled a ton of them, grades would probably be the one thing that that we talk about a lot. Yes, sir, because obviously athletics are more than just athletics as well, too. Obviously, you have to make sure you stay on there with the school elastics out of it as well, too, right? That's why they call them student athletes, right? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Now, what what can we expect from you going forward now? Because I know we're not in season right now. What, What do we got going on right now with you and the team? Uh, right now, it's a big recruiting time for us. Uh, mm-hmm. So we're just finishing up being on the road, going into local high schools in Wisconsin, Illinois, that kind of stuff, uh, and then getting those guys on campus. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, obviously, you've been on Carthage's campus. A lot of people that listen have probably been on Carthage's campus. It's an easy sell once we get them on campus, mm-hmm. right? The, the education, yeah, the facilities we have, unbelievable location. Uh, you know, so now it's just getting them on campus. Uh, like I said, we had 28 kids on campus today. I think we got 35 coming tomorrow as mm-hmm. well. Uh, and just kind of talking about what we do offensively, defensively, how we run the program, what we're about, that kind of stuff. Yes, sir. Now, with you being from Wisconsin, is it safe to say you're a Bears fan? <laughs> <laughs> you see how I tried to throw that in there. I'm a diehard Bears fan. But obviously, it's safe to say you're that, a Bears fan. Honestly, that's the best part about living close to the borders. You get that good mix, right? Mm-hmm. There's that healthy competition. And I, I say all the time to our guys that are Bears fans, you guys are true fans. <laughs> Easy to be a Packers guy. I mean, the Packers just win and win and win, right? Yeah. Harder to be a Bears fan and take that constant oh losing. You're hurting my feelings over here right now. I'm going to have to cancel this show right here. <laughs> no, but what is it like for the day in the life of the recruits? That you have like what, what can they expect arriving to the campus with you yeah i think uh the biggest transition guys have from coming from high school to college is just the enormity of of college football right a lot of times in high school they show up for fall camp and it's you know a couple hours in the morning maybe an hour or two in the afternoon they can go home they can see their mom and dad they can see their girlfriend they can play xbox right when mm-hmm. they get on campus uh in a college setting and it's 24 7 right you don't leave uh it's football all the time you're exhausted physically you're exhausted mentally a little bit uh and so that that's a tough transition to start with and then um typically that becomes their most favorite time of year right because it's all yes, football They're with their buddies that kind of stuff and mm-hmm. and then as soon as that's done we throw school on top of it right yeah. so they have a new stressor um you know but uh, i think one thing you watch guys especially that freshman year is they've really become pretty resilient yes, uh, you know to everything that's thrown on their plate and be able to manage their time and handle all that stuff uh, and and that's probably where you see the a, a ton of growth is that first couple months that they're on campus. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Now, with you being the head coach, how involved with you are – excuse me, I can't talk for some reason today, but how involved are you with the play calling? Uh, not a ton. I mean, I'll give my input, but I kind of let the coordinators, uh, you know, do what we hired them to do. Mm-hmm. Uh, we've got two great uh, coordinators that, that are really smart football-wise that, that are great teachers. So, you know, I'll interject here and there uh, with what I think should happen. Um, mm-hmm. But really, a lot of it is, are we punting on fourth down? Do we call a timeout here? Are we kicking a field goal or going for it? Um, you know, that kind of stuff. Yes, sir. Now, what type of coach would you say you are on the side, right? Now, are you the Andy Reid type or are you the Mike Tomlin guy? Whereas Mike Tomlin, he's racing down the field. He's getting really, really active. But then if you look at a guy like Andy Reid, you see the same face 24-7, no matter if they're up two touchdowns, no matter if they're down two touchdowns. Uh, yeah, I'm pretty more – I'd say I'd lean more towards the Andy Reid kind. I'm not, I'm not super animated. I will get fired up every once in a while. Yes, sir. Um, but, uh, but not quite like Mike Tomlin does. Yeah. <laughs> now, obviously it's different for the coach stepping on the field opposed to the player stepping on the field. But just take us through what it's like for you stepping on the field. What is it that you're looking for or what is it that you're focused on when you're stepping on the field? I mean, for me, it's a lot of the, you know, the external factors, uh, you know, which way is the wind blowing? Are we going to kick into the wind? Are we going to kick, you know, with the wind? Uh, kind of some of the things they're doing in warmups, they have a guy out that we didn't know about. Is that going to change their offensive scheme, their defensive scheme? Uh, you know, those kind of things, like what we can attack to help give us an advantage to win a football game. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Now, can you tell us a little bit about your favorite moment as a football coach? Oh, man, there's so many 
there's so many good ones. I, I love just the locker room after a win. Mm-hmm. Uh, and it doesn't matter if it's a, it's a huge win or a, a game you're supposed to win. Just seeing the excitement in guys' eyes, knowing that they just put in how many ever weeks of work and, and how tough that is physically and mentally and emotionally. And then just that joy after a win, that's, that's the best feeling. Yes, sir. Now, as a parent of an athlete as well, what are some things that you use to coach your kids up after a loss when some when not everyone takes a loss the same way? Some people may just be down and out for the next couple of days. Other people can shake it off. What what are some things that you were telling those players after a loss? Yeah, a big thing for us is just controlling what you can control, right? And, and you can't control what happened in the past, but you can control how you respond to it and the work that you put in to make sure that it doesn't happen again. Mm-hmm. Nice, nice. What are some things that we can expect from you guys this upcoming season? Well, I think uh, I think it'll be a pretty exciting season. We uh, we don't graduate a ton of uh, starters, uh, so we bring a lot of guys back. Um, you know, we had six All Conference players; five of them return for us nice. uh, this next year. We were a fairly young team, uh, you know, so we bring a lot of guys back. So it'll be excited to see what we can do with a little more experience. And when does the season kick off for you guys? Not until uh, September third. Mm-hmm. Uh, so we're on the road September third at Albion uh, over. In Michigan, uh, so we got quite a bit of time. We got to wait. I was just uh, gonna say that's a long, long time. You know? <laughs> but we got some stuff, uh, some work we got to put in first before we can get to that point. Yes, sir. What What are the training sessions like that are led by you, sir? So we'll, uh, you know, right now we're kind of what we call recovery lifts, right? Mm-hmm. We're we're going after the season. Guys are beat up, right? And uh, just kind of building the base a little bit. And we start in January is when we really start hitting it hard. We'll lift nice. four days a week in January and February. We go every Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, Friday. Yeah. Uh, and then in March, we start kind of our speed and agility work as well. So we'll lift Monday, Tuesday, Friday, or excuse mm-hmm. me, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and we'll run Tuesday, Thursday. Nice. Uh, and then in April, we'll get our spring practices in, uh, you know, so our spring ball stuff. Uh, and then we finish that in May, and then we send them home with a summer workout packet on nice. on what they need to do to prepare, uh, be prepared for fall camp. Yes, sir. Now, if coaching a team, I'm pretty sure you see so many type of different characters between the players and everything like that. Do you ever find yourself in a weight room with these guys trying to compete with them and say, well, this is how we did it back in my day or ever find yourself doing that? <laughs> Every once in a while, not often though. They're uh, they're in a lot better shape than I am. They can, uh, they can take it to me now. But every once in a while, we... We kind of mix it up with them a little bit. Yes, sir. Now, as we get ready to close out this amazing episode, what would be the one thing you would want that player to know who's on the border of possibly giving up or sticking with football? You have such a limited time to play football. You have such a limited time to play most sports, right? You know, football is not a lifetime sport. Mm -hmm. Play it as long as you possibly can because eventually somebody's not going to let you anymore. Mm -hmm. Uh, And it's hard and it's supposed to be hard. And, you you know, part of – Part of the great thing about football is you have to learn to fight through some of that stuff, and 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 that's such a great translation into life, right? Life isn't easy. It's going to be a challenge. There's going to be adversity. and mm-hmm. So fight through it. Stay with it. Play it as long as possible because someday you won't be able to anymore. Yes, sir. Now, I noticed you said you have two boys? I have two boys and a girl, yeah. Okay, nice. Are, now, are they going to be the heir to the coaching tree next? We'll see. I don't know. Um, yeah. We'll see if they uh, if they like it or not. If they want to keep doing it or not. I mean, at the end of the day, they got to live the life that they want. Yes, sir. Now, is there anyone that you want to shout out or give kudos to or anything like that, sir? Ah, no, not at all. But <laughs> but I do appreciate you having me on. Uh, you know, it's awesome to be able to come on and uh, you know share Carthage football a little bit and and uh, some of the great things we have going on there. You calling? Are you listening? Tune in every week. Line for line. Oh yeah, I'm going to laugh, laugh